This week, I get on a train, stumble across Kazakhstan's version of The Walking Dead, and finally get to meet Borat. Borat. Hello. As I take a two-day train ride across Kazakhstan. Well, hello. From Astana in Kazakhstan, I am at a train station of Vauxhall. Not a Vauxhall Nova or a Vauxhall Corvette or anything like that, or a Chevette rather. And this is the Vauxhall, which is the uh, Russian for railway station. And that's why we're here at a railway station, because we're taking a train across Kazakhstan. Yay! So um, let's head inside and see what it's like taking a ride across Kazakhstan on a Kazakh train. Let's go. Now considering it's the train station of the capital city of Kazakhstan, Astana's main train station is pretty basic really. There's a waiting hall and a couple of cafes upstairs and well, that's about it really. So I'm on train 52 tonight which is going to take me down to Almaty back again. I only just arrived from there about an hour ago. Um, that was last week's video, make sure you check that out. Uh, but now, yeah, we're heading on a train south. But I've got about an hour, about an hour until my train leaves. So um, let's go and see if we can find something to eat here. Once you get upstairs, there isn't really a lot there. There's a coffee shop, a mini market with the dubious name of the Shagin shop and a fried chicken shop. Spicy, I'm taking a train back tonight down to Almaty in the south of Kazakhstan. It's taken me about an hour and a half on the plane today to come up on the plane. It's about a 14 hour ride to get back down there um, if you to go by train. So I thought it would be a cool experience to do it. I'm going to try an overnight sleeper train here in Kazakhstan um, and find out just what it's like. Um, hopefully it will be quite nice. I've been on trains in this part of the world before and then they're generally okay so um, let's see and hopefully fingers crossed it's all on time and everything and um, it looks like it might be on time there's nothing to say it's delayed or anything like that but who knows who knows and um, we're going to finish me chicken nuggets and then we'll get on the train and head south now, not that you really need to know this but i've just been to the toilet and um, it's interesting because as you walk into the bathroom there is a lady handing out pieces of toilet paper to you and you get two pieces given to you when you go in let's hope it's not a big one hey Right, let's go down and see where the train is. I decided to head out to the platform and wait for the train out there in the fresh air. But unfortunately, with the signs not updating to show what platform the train was going from, I really had no idea if I was on the right train platform or not. All right, I've come to wait outside. Um, I'm not entirely sure like which track this train is going from. There's two lines here, but I think looking up there, you have to go over a bridge, which means going back inside. And I don't know whether I can now. Now I've come outside. <laughs> I don't know. I think there was a security checkpoint on the door, so maybe if you go through security, you can do it. I don't know. I'm hoping this might be the right one. There's lots of people waiting around here. Excuse you. There's lots of people waiting on this platform and nobody on the other one. So I'm fingers crossed this might be the train to Almaty on this line. Who knows? We'll find out in a minute, I guess. The train should have been here about five minutes ago, so it's running a bit late. Excuse me, is this Almaty? No. Almaty? Well, I guess that answers that then. Now, I'm no train spotter in the slightest, but I did think that these trains in Kazakhstan did look pretty cute. The little faces on the front reminded me of something out of Chuggington. Right, the train's here. I need wagon number two, which is right down the bottom end, I think. So let's go and um, see if we can get on board. Now, one thing about trains in this part of the world is that they are really, really long, and it's a heck of a walk right the way down to the far end of the train to get on board. Hi, wagon two. Next, next, okay. Hi, is this wagon number two? This way, okay. So this, this two. Okay. This two. Yeah. Thank you. Спасибо. You're into another English speaker. Hey, <laughs> found one. I've only been here three days. Have you? <laughs> Hi. So where are you going to? Almaty. Almaty, yeah. Uh, we're going to Karaganda. Oh, nice. And then we're going to Almaty. We're going to Almaty. <laughs> Everywhere. Uzbekistan. And... <laughs> oh, right, I think I'm in here. Nine. 
Right, so welcome on board the Kazakh train to Almaty. I've got the bottom bunk here, there's another chapel on top. And this is my room, or our room I should say. We've got a um, sink I think here, that sort of, there you go. Sink lifts up, you've got power here. A light switch down there somewhere. A bit of storage there. This is it really. It's a bit, bit, bit basic. This is first class in Kazakhstan. This is this is as luxurious as you get in Kazakhstan. <laughs> so um, yeah, 15 hours on this train, all the way down, ow, all the way down to um, Almaty overnight. Um, it's going to be interesting. Let's um, let's see 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 how we go. Really, I'm reserving judgment. I mean, the person in the next room seems to have the TV on at full blast. You can hear it from here. It, it's um, it, 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 it might be a long night. I might need some earplugs. <laughs> right, the problem is uh, just brought around me sheets for my bed. There we go. Sheets and duvet and stuff. There's a pillow here, by the way. Hopefully it's not too uncomfortable. We'll see how smooth this thing is when we get going. And so around 30 minutes behind schedule, we pulled out of the train station here in Astana for the overnight train ride all the way down to Almaty. The train down to Almaty covers almost a thousand miles and winds its way south through Karaganda along the shores of Lake Balkash and down to Shu before heading east along the Kyrgyz border into Almaty. This is the fastest train on the route which is timetabled at 16 hours but with the delays we had along the route it took closer to 20. Right, we are on the move out of the storm there. 16 hours left to go. <laughs> Not sure I'll have this smile on my face in the morning, but we will find out. We'll see. Relatively smooth so far, but I am heavily touching wood because I've said this before on training. So it's been smooth at the beginning and then you get out into the sticks and they get a bit bumpy, but hey. The thing that always amazes me about Kazakhstan is the second, literally the second you leave a city, this is it. This is pretty much all there is. Like the entire of Astana is within like a ring road. We went outside of the ring road and it's like this. Just nothing as far as the eye can see. Incredible. This train's going to take us down to Karaganda, which is like south of Astana. From there, it continues south overnight. I think it goes around like Balkash, I think. Um, which is the big lake in between here and Almaty. And then we eventually wind up in Almaty tomorrow morning about nine o'clock, if the train's on time. I think we left about 20 minutes late, so it'll be interesting to see if we make up some time. It's time for the Noel Phillips Blue Review. <laughs> for the Kazakhstani train loo review. I thought I'd come and do it while the journey is still young. Not too many people have used it. Um, and it, it's like an aeroplane toilet, really. We've got an actual toilet, an actual sit-down toilet, which is not normal on the, compared to the most recent trains I've been on. Um, we've got an empty paper towel dispenser just here. Um, and a sink there. And a shaving outlet and things. Some bog roll down there. There's no lady on the door cleaning your bunk roll as you come in, you get the actual full roll to choose from, which is really nice. Um, and it looks like it's got one of these cleaning inspection things, it's inspected and cleaned regularly, that's quite nice, isn't it, really, for a, um, for a train loop. But anyway, so far so good, enjoying the ride. It's um, a little bit bumpy in places. The guy that was in the room with me has now got into a room on his own, so I don't know. We may get lucky and not have a seatmate tonight, but I don't know, but um, I'm going to go and get back to my room before I fall face first into this toilet. That was the Noel Phillips Blue Review. We continued winding our way south towards Karaganda with the endless desert being punctuated occasionally by a train yard or a small group of houses. I do always wonder who lives out here literally in the middle of nowhere though, it must be incredibly isolating. Well, apart from the occasional train rumbling past at least.
Oh, and in other interesting news too, I am not the only English person on the train. That's only turn up for the book, doesn't it? Um, there's a lovely um, older English couple in the next carriage I've been down talking to. They're travelling around Kazakhstan at the minute for a holiday. What a holiday that is. Um, what a holiday that must be, actually. You're rather travelling around. And they're off to Karaganda tonight on the train, which is like one of the first stops about three hours from Almaty. But it's um, yeah, great to meet some um, English people um, on the on the train, I have to say, you don't very often find tourists on these trains, um, but it is worth coming and doing. You should, if you are an English tourist looking to go somewhere cool, come and visit Kazakhstan. I mean, just just this, these views just out over another. This is still the same view, by the way, over here. I mean, maybe I'll get a little bit bored of it later, but it's not too much of an issue because it'll get dark in a little while anyway, and then it'll be dark anyway, and we'll be able to see out. But um, it, it's, Kazakhstan is an incredible country, it's one of my favorite places on earth to visit. So much history here, so much to see, so much to do, and it's off the beaten track. It's just really, really cool. Come and visit Kazakhstan. And so, the timetable for this train is up here at the end of the carriage. Um, and it's been on a bit of a journey already, this train, actually. If you look where it's been, I'm going to try and read some of these Russian names. Do not shout at me, please, if my Russian is too bad. But um, it started at Uralsk in Russia. And then it went, got to the Kazakhstan border at 6.30 last night. And it's been to um, Nikol, Nikol Tau, Itek something, Tobol Kushmer, Esni, Esni, at Basar, No Sultan, Astana, Karagandi, Sari, Shagan, and then Almaty, which arrives tomorrow morning at 9.41. As the route is taken, it started in Russia. And it's been like about 24 hours of it, it's gone all the way down to um, Almaty, um, sorry, to Astana, and now it's spending the entire night again across Kazakhstan, going down to um, Almaty. Every once in a while the train picks up a road to follow and you see a load of lorries going up and down the motorways. It's never too long though before you back out in the middle of nowhere again. Aside from the toilets at the end of each carriage there's a water machine giving hot and cold water so you can do things like pot noodles which is pretty cool. As we got closer to the city of Karaganda the sun started to set and it was an absolutely incredible sunset. Did you know 77% of travellers are adjusting their travel plans because of inflation? They had no other choice but to find alternatives, especially in places like Kazakhstan where sanctions on the usual Russian train routes reduced shipments in the region by as much as 40% last year. As these conflicts drag on, economic growth is suffocated, prices fluctuate and financial markets churn in terror. And of course this is a global issue, hardworking people like you and me are stuck holding the bill wondering how you're going to retire. These aren't typical times, so they don't call for typical investments. Which is why when I came across a shocking news story from one of the largest banks in the world, UBS, I knew I had to share it with you. You see, UBS revealed that many billionaires are allocating up to 50% of their portfolios to an unexpected asset that helps them hedge instability while maximizing growth potential. Do you want to know what this incredible investment is? It's fine art. And even better, fine art has enjoyed double digit appreciation annually over the last 27 years. Pretty incredible. No wonder why over 800,000 people have joined the fine art investing platform called Masterworks. Masterworks lets you invest in the very same art UBS recommends for a fraction of the price. And no, you don't need to know anything about art, because Masterworks takes care of it all. But you have to act fast because with this kind of incredible growth, offerings have sold out within the hour. But my subscribers can get started today by signing up at the link in the description. See important disclosures at masterworks.com slash cd. All right then, so it's starting to get dark. We're almost in Karagandi now, um, which is kind of the first stop on this train. And um, there's a mobile disco going on in the next room. They've finished watching TV now. They've got music blasting out and some horrendous Kazakhstani heavy metal playing as well. It's <laughs> it's brilliant. Um, I'm, I am going to be having my um, noise cancelers in tonight, I think. <laughs> and I hope, hopefully, hopefully it drowns it out. But anyway, let's get this bed made up. So you get like a bag with all your sheets and stuff in it. And we get a little towel, pillow slip, sheet, and another sheet. Yes, the one I found. It's what to play with. Toy car. Hey. 
we might have a mobile disco going on, but at least I can play with me car. The beds are pretty basic and they are not the most comfortable. So it's a little bit like a prison cell. I've never been to prison, but it's a little bit like how I imagine it is. I ain't giving you bed linen and it's all basically you have to put it all together every night and it's not quite right and slightly uncomfortable. But hey, hey, it's okay. Let's see how comfy this is. I'm not going to lie, it's not the comfiest bed to lay on, there's a few metal bits prodded up and down, um, but it's quite long, that's what she said, it's quite long, and my feet aren't touching that wall at that end, and my head's not touching this end either, it's quite long, it's more spacious than an aeroplane bed, that is for sure, um, so yeah, I'm going to chill out. I think we're about to hit Karaganda in a minute, and then once we've left Karaganda, I'm going to try and get some sleep, I think. As I lay in bed struggling to rest amongst itchy sheets and uncomfortable pillows, I had a bit of a brainwave. I figured that people travelling could really do with a comfy pillow that could double as a comfy fluffy blanket. So I decided to make one, and thus the limited edition Noel Phillips travel blanket and pillow set was born. This comfy travel pillow doubles up as a blanket, allowing you to wrap up nice and warm. It's light and easy to pack and slots nicely over the handles on your suitcase, meaning you can take it with you everywhere. I've made just a hundred of these so they are strictly limited edition and you can order them in the merch store right now at noelphillips.com to get your hands on yours while they're still available for sale. Right then we've stopped at Karaganda about three hours into the journey now. Um, I think, fingers crossed, the um, noisy two guys who were having the um, Kazakh rock disco in the next room, I think they've just got off, thankfully, so they can go and hassle somebody with their, else with their... Um, noisy music, these darn kids. Um, anyway, they've got off, I think. Um, and we are gonna take on some more passengers, I think, here at Karaganda, and then continue. The next stop is like at three in the morning. I'm hoping not to be away for that. And then finally, we arrive into Almaty at like 9 a.m. or something tomorrow morning. Now these long station stops I usually quite like because that's the time when I can actually try to fall asleep. So I lay down on the bed and try to get a little bit of rest and I'm not going to lie, it wasn't the best night's sleep. Good morning from somewhere in southern Kazakhstan. I'm not entirely sure where, but absolutely zero phone signal. So that's where we are, right in the middle of nowhere. No GPS on this um, train either because the windows are all like tinted, so I don't know where we are, but we're somewhere in Kazakhstan. The sun's come up, it's about six in the morning. I got about two hours sleep last night. Because my body is still on, it's not still not adjusting to the local time yet, so I don't know what I'm going to do for the rest of the trip. I think I'm just going to stay on um, American time for the rest of the trip, but anyway, I'm going to go get some breakfast, see if the buffet cars open. I mean, look at those views, it's just incredible. There's just something incredible about the desolateness of it. But, um, let's go and um, try and find the buffy car, right? I found the buffet car, but walking through it felt like something from The Walking Dead. I decided it was probably a wise idea to head back to my room and eat when I got to Almaty. Buffy car's not open yet, it's being used as a sort of, it looks like it's like Dawn of the Dead in there at the minute, there's lots of uh, sort of corpses lying around, um, I'm sure it's just normal and all that, but uh, I think it opens in about an hour's time, which is ironically when we arrive in Almaty, so um, yeah, I'm going to be eating on the train, am I? but that's what the buffet car looks like anyway. But sadly, it wasn't just an hour until we were going to arrive into Almaty as I was about to find out. Because as we crossed the mountains near to the Shu region of southern Kazakhstan, the train started picking up delay after delay after delay, and pretty soon we were between three and four hours late. But as we got closer to Almaty, the mountains started to appear out of the window, a welcome sight that we were nearing the end of our journey, or, well, at least so I thought. Right now, we were supposed to have arrived into Almaty station about 40 minutes ago. Um, but as you can see, we're just stationary. Um, and we've been sat here now for about 
an hour now. Um, I actually thought we were going to be early because we were actually making really good time into our matting. We've just been sat here in this yard now for like an hour. I just want to get off. <laughs> I want to go, go and get some sleep and get some things to eat and everything. And um, yeah, but I can't. I'm sort of trapped on this train now. Hey. <sighs> Oh, 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 we're moving, we're moving. But sadly, this was the order of the day for the next few hours. We'd roll forward a few hundred yards, then stop for 40 minutes, and then rinse and repeat. But eventually, we rolled into Almaty Station, and shortly after, we rolled straight out of Almaty Station on the other side. All right, so we appear to have sailed straight through Almaty Station and out towards the other side of Almaty, which is a bit concerning because I think the next stop after this is um, China. <laughs> and I don't want to go to China today. <laughs> we've, we've just sort of... We're on the outskirts of Almaty again, just sort of heading straight out. Hmm. I'm not entirely sure what's going on. I think, I think I've sussed it. Um, there's two train stations in Almaty. Almaty 1 and Almaty 2. And I think we're going to Almaty 2, which is on the other side of the city. I think. I hope so. <laughs> At least there was time for a bit of train spotting out of the window though as we rolled around Almaty to the other train station there. The train lines around Almaty are pretty weird, they go right alongside all the city streets so you're just rolling on a train past lines of cars. But eventually after a delay of almost 4 hours we pulled into the other train station in Almaty and it was finally time to get off the sleeper train and go to get some sleep. Right, here we are, Almaty 2. We have arrived at number 2. Don't find me off the train, that is. Yeah. Alright, welcome to Almaty. I don't know which way I need to go. I thought I needed to go this way, but everyone seems to be going another way towards the front of the train. But hey, we'll figure it out in a minute. I've no idea. We're all going this way, look. Hang on. It looks like we're going this way. So let's um, head down here. Well, this seems safe. Right, there we go, across the live railway track. <laughs> the ultimate Kazakhstan train experience. Right, here we are then. Almaty number two. Let's head through the station and see if I can get a ride out of here and get to my hotel. This is a very beautiful um, station, isn't it? Vokzal Almaty 2. Two. The station in Almaty is a lot grander than the train station up in Astana, which is strange considering how Astana is the capital city of Kazakhstan. There we are then, Almaty station number two. Um, there's a beautiful old statue over there as well, if you see that as well. Um, I'm going to try and get myself a Yandex and um, see if it turns up and takes me to me um, to my hotel. Okay, so my Yandex is balked, and in an amazing twist of comedy fate, my driver is named Borat. Hey, yes, <laughs> Dimesh. Oh, cool. I'm going to have a ride with Borat in his Kia. Didn't realise he drove a Kia. I thought we had a Lada, but um, anyway. So yeah, Borat's coming to pick me up, take me to my hotel. Hey. And pretty soon Borat turned up in his Kia, and I'm not going to lie, it was a little bit smarter than I'd been expecting. Hello. Svasvita. Borat. Hello. Clearly the two movie deals must have worked out really well for him. And it wasn't too long before we'd arrived back at my hotel in downtown Almaty. I'd like to say thank you to my amazing Patreons for their ongoing support. You can join them at the link on the screen now for access to my WhatsApp group, regular Zoom calls with me, and much more. All right then, welcome back to Almaty. Oh, an actual bed to sleep in, and hopefully no um, Kazakh heavy metal hard rock music blasting out, um, or babies crying overnight, or anything else nice 
nice relaxing night's sleep now hopefully i mean i say a relaxing night's sleep it is 11 o'clock in the morning um, but i'm about to go to bed because i am trying to stay on central time and back in america at the minute in texas it's midnight so it's about bedtime so i'm gonna try and get to sleep i've got a very early start local time tomorrow because i've got yet another adventure here in kazakhstan that i'm going to be heading off on tomorrow so make sure you hit subscribe if you haven't done already so you don't miss that video as well you know a little bit more kazakh action and who knows where we may end up on the next video so in the meantime thanks ever so much for watching and putting up with me for the last however long this video is taking um take care and i'll um, well, I'll, I'll see you on the next one bye for now